Every hour around the world, there are 800 people killed by cigarette smoking. We're talking about two Boeing 747 planes loaded with men, women, and children blowing up in the sky every single hour of the day, every single day. That would be equivalent to the number from the September 11th attacks, which killed nearly 3,000 people, happening six and a half times a day. Are you sitting on these flights? Why does no country ban tobacco manufacturing? By leading to nearly 7 million deaths per year, cigarettes hold claim to the number one spot of the top four most destructive inventions of human history. Cigarettes even outrank AK-47 rifles, atomic bombs, and dynamite. Have you never wondered why most governments in the world have anti-smoking movements, but none of them ban tobacco manufacturing? The answer is obvious. The tobacco industry contributes significantly to the government budgets of those countries manufacturing cigarettes. In 1960, the French government collected 1.2 million francs per minute. In 1977, the Japanese government's budget collected $13 billion from cigarette taxes. And in 1984, the small island of Cyprus still earned 11 million pounds from cigarette tax. For ages, tobacco companies in the United States and United Kingdom have been known for their mass manufacturing of cigarettes. Every year, the world produces 6 million tons of cigarettes. The United States accounts for 1 million tons of that total. The business profit is worth tens of billions of dollars. In the U.S., the tobacco company's power is reflected through their contribution to the government's budget, which is a crucial part of the development and survival of that country. Therefore, tobacco companies are untouchable since their evil impacts have reached deeply into the government. They lobby every government election as well as support the government's finances. Politicians don't dare defy tobacco companies because they don't want their political careers to end prematurely. The history of the world's tobacco industry is long and it's been growing with a great number of mysterious business affairs and political manipulations. Even the health department was manipulated. In the early to mid 20th century, tobacco tycoons covered the negative effects of tobacco research. On the other hand, they secretly invested in building tobacco research centers. Spokespersons from these centers were all related to this dirty money. They claimed that there was no evidence that proved cigarettes caused cancer, nor did any ingredients in cigarettes lead to cancer. In fact, about one third of all cancer deaths are related to tobacco use. Tobacco companies have even made people believe that cigarettes are healthy by paying millions of dollars for celebrities to smoke cigarettes in movies or paying famous athletes to be cigarette spokespersons. On the contrary, tobacco companies endeavored to fund anti-smoking campaigns for children. We can see this is how tobacco companies shape public opinion and gratify the government by funding the construction of tobacco rehab centers and building anti-smoking movements. In 1986, the United States launched an anti-smoking movement. It's ironic that the nation manufacturing the largest number of cigarettes started an anti-smoking movement. The movement took millions of dollars from the government budget, but fines from smoking illegally were also profitable. This movement has made a huge impact around the world. Other countries started to follow. Tobacco companies happily plucked out hundreds of millions of dollars to deal with those anti-movements. However, they raised the sale productivity in order to increase the purchasing power from buyers. As a result, cigarette sales in the United States increased dramatically, reaching a total of $93.4 billion in 2016. With financial power, the tobacco company spent loads of money to recruit the smartest and most skillful employees to protect their empire, including managers, salespeople, lawyers, doctors, spokespersons, and many more. Everyone operates like a well-oiled machine. They're ready to face any problem threatening their empire. Due to the large contribution to the government budget from tobacco companies, cigarettes are not only encouraged to be manufactured, but are also protected secretly or publicly. Therefore, the government will not allow any organizations to pressure or influence cigarette manufacturing. <coughs> The government just vaguely references the negative effects of cigarette smoking by imprinting some useless warnings on each cigarette pack, which no one pays attention to. Occasionally, there are some winning cases against tobacco companies in the courts. 
However, that might be an action just reassuring public opinion. Or is it a hidden war among tobacco companies? Meanwhile, tobacco companies are still selling 27.65 million cigarette cartons globally each year. Now, that's equivalent to emitting 2.262 million kilograms of waste, 209 million kilograms of chemical waste to the environment. There are more than 4 million hectares of deforestation for cigarette fuels, rolling paper production, and paper wrapping. With these intimidating figures, tobacco companies around the world have grossed $765 billion, but they also kill 7 million people every year. Isn't it ironic how most governments prohibit smoking in public, but still allow cigarette manufacturing? A smoke-free world seems like an impossible thing. If there's still hope for a world like that, you should start to quit cigarette smoking or simply to say no to cigarettes. Please share this video with everyone around you. By doing this, 800 people may still be dying every hour because of cigarettes, but it's better to take action than do nothing, right? Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share your thoughts on the video in the comments box below and suggest the topic you want the monsters to discover next.